Hello. One of the themes that I think has been running through my little series of videos that I've been uh, doing now for a little while is the, the idea of commitment. And it's something that I think is really um, affecting the church. Uh, we've just come through, or we're still coming through, I think, uh, this um, dreadful uh, coronavirus outbreak, uh, which has really sort of damaged uh, relationships within the within the, the um, society. Now, what that's done is cut off people and from normal pursuits. And that, that involves a lot of re-evaluation of life and re-evaluation of commitments. You'll notice that people are now asking to work from home more. And from a church perspective, uh, if people have been content with seeing services online, well, why go to church? You can stay at home and watch a service on Zoom or on YouTube or somewhere else. It's made us reevaluate what uh, we're prepared to do. Now, that is all very well. But there is a problem, I think, of, first of all, of becoming too comfortable. If you are used to uh, zooming your, your, your church or watching on YouTube, well, we're, we're facing, in the UK, we're facing an energy price hike. And there's always possibility of blackouts. Um, what happens if the electricity goes off or the wireless goes out? Um, well, if we're faced with these little things. Church doesn't go out. At least it shouldn't. So, at, coming to the end of this, or hopefully the end of this um, series of lockdowns, as we sort of venture out blinking into the, to the new light, we have to sort of reappraise what it is we really find important. And if we're Christian, there is only one thing we should consider to be supremely important, and that is God in three persons, Blessed Trinity. And it's how we worship him, it's how we engage with him. And if he says, love thy neighbour as thyself, and if he says that he's going to build a church, and if the example of the apostles' teaching shows that the way to worship, worship God is to be part of the church, is to come together, to be, not to hide ourselves from our own kin, each other, Cloistered monks and Carthusians seem to be very adept at it. The, the hermit life is is wonderful, and Saint Benedict himself will say so. But Saint Benedict also says that for someone to be a hermit and to cut oneself off completely from society, that requires a faith that needs to have been tried and tested, and he, and he says that the best way to try and test a faith is in a community, in a church community, or a monastery. So we really do have to consider what it is in our lives that is so important. And if the church is not that important to us, what does that say about our relationship with God? Is it all on our terms? 
Do we just worship God in the comfort of our own home? Or do we go out and seek people? Do we go out and seek church? It's very easy for introverts, and quite frankly a lot of Christians do seem to be more introverted uh, in certain uh, denominations. Um, I remember many uh, uh, a time uh, in the Church of England where everyone would sit in the back pews, and the front pews would be more or less empty, which was quite bizarre. It's quite something to see. Everyone clamoured to the back or near the door. And it makes me wonder, well, well why is that? Do you, do you not want to be involved? Do you not... Do you see church as being something to do on a Sunday morning? Now, that's rather sad if that's true. If we go to church just to be entertained, you know, to sing the nice hymns, watch the priest do his little, do his little talk, and then wave his hands about, and then we all come up with a nice little wafer and a sip of wine, and then we all go for coffee. What does that say about our Christian faith? What does that say about our drive, our love for God? That we see him as our entertainment. Love requires response. God first loves us. And if we say that we love God, what is our response? How are we responding? How are we making the sacrifice? And here's the thing. We need to invest ourselves in our church. We need to be doing something. We need to be giving of our time, of our talents, of our money, of whatever it is that's special about us. And we are all special. If God has wanted to create each and every one of us, then we have something to offer him. And although it may be of his own, it is still something that we want to offer. We have to invest ourselves in our church. And that means coming out of our comfort hole. We need to be moving about. In our little diocese, we are very, very spread out. Uh, we've got some in northeast England, some in northwest England, and some in southeast England. And our and our cathedral is in right in the right in the corner, in uh, just just slightly south of Faversham. So. Come for us, you know. If we want the synod, people. Some people have to come very, very far. Some people have to come from Bolton, which I think is the furthest northeast. We've got two lovely, lovely parishes in Wales, and they quite happily. To me, it seems quite happy. They 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 get on their little coach and they come over to the synod. At least they they could when 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 the synod wasn't closed for COVID. So, these folk make the commitment, they invest in their church. And we need that investment. If the church is to grow, if it's to do anything, it needs investment, not necessarily of money. Money, money always helps, but it's not the be-all and end-all. The church grows because its people grow. And its people progress in Christ. That's the whole point in the church. The church is to grow people. To grow them closer to God. With their feet on the floor. 
and aspiring to heaven. Our masses are for the experience of God. That God may be present in the liturgy, in the blessed sacrament, and people may come in and feel him, and then be taught by the church, and learn to teach with the church. That we have priests who who learn, who strive to always um, to, to improve their learning and to find ways of reaching out to people as best they can. It's a, such a hard task. And the condition of the fall is that Adam had to labour hard and we have to labour hard. That's okay. Because God honours it. It's a sacrifice. We make our lives holy by, sac by sacrificing them. By sacrificing what we hold dear to make it holy for God. So it's well worth considering what you have to offer. Who are you? And what is it that God has made you? for his church. What do you have to offer the church? What are you willing to invest? And if you invest a little bit, then you will grow. And then you'll be able to invest another little bit. And you'll grow. And you'll be keeping on investing and growing and investing and growing until with the rest of the church you will grow in Christ. And you will grow, and you will find salvation with the church in which you have grown. I think that's wonderful. That's, the church is a lovely gift, and yes, there are lots of scandals going about at the moment. That doesn't change the goodness of God. It doesn't change what the church is for. But if the church has got to improve, it needs people to invest themselves, it needs you, it needs your input, it needs you to go that mile, go that extra mile, it needs you to fight for the church, it needs you to give your wonderfulness, and you are wonderful, because God made you. And whatever God makes is wonderful. So please consider, what can you do? What will you, what will you invest so that God may be glorified and hum human beings may grow closer to God? God bless you as you consider the answer to these questions. God bless you in your vocation. God bless you as you grow in Christ. God bless you richly, and please pray for me.